computers. We didn't have TV. Until we were teenagers. We were the last generation to grow up with radio. I was an avid listener to, to radio shows like uh, Take It From Here, um, before that, Jewel and Morris, um, Hancock, uh, uh, all sorts of radio shows. And then later, uh, when I was about 13, 14, The Goon Show. The Goons were very important as being not just their comedy, but the fact that they were the first people to really use radio. The whole point of radio is that you can conjure up anything you like. It was that week that Nugent Dirt was taken to court by his wife. <laughs> The court will now stand for Judge Snow. And if you'll stand for him, you'll stand for anything. The goons can take you anywhere. And so can any, all form of radio is in the imagination and creates all that. So I think that was quite significant for us. Here came a show which was not like any of the other shows. It, it didn't have the same kind of rules. It didn't have any rules. It, it didn't even like the, the medium that was putting it out, particularly. It didn't like the BBC. Wonderful. There was something that uh, I could relate to. This is the BBC Home Service. Thank you. Well, I was introduced to the Goons when I was about 11, 12 years old. And I just remember discovering the this strange, odd, weird and wonderful show that was so different from anything you could see um, on a film or on television. And I became almost obsessed with them. I used to listen to the show, and then two nights later I would listen to the repeat because I wanted to catch everything. And sometimes there was so much laughter you couldn't hear certain lines. I used to lie on the bed with the radio there and a pillow on my ear just to try and get the line that I'd missed two days before. The Phantom Head Shaver of Brighton, part three. By now, the position was serious. All told, 300 men have been balded by the Phantom. I mean, listening to the goon shows at a Sunday lunchtime was a ritual in our, in our family. Come on, Phantom Head Shaver, you're surrounded, you hear? We're all heavily armed. If you don't come, we'll come to that door, and so help me, we'll knock. Yeah, <laughs> tell them, yeah. If you don't come out, we'll come, and we'll knock. Shut up. So there was nothing like these people just being very ridiculous and silly and strange voices and long pauses and you know, playing around with this whole sort of form of a radio show in a way that was felt genuinely kind of subversive at the time. Blue Bottle! I heard you call me, Captain! I heard my little raggy Captain call me. Enter Blue Bottle, pauses for audience applause, as usual, not a sussy. <laughs> At the same time, my parents were listening to sort of mainstream stuff like Much Binding in the Marsh and uh, Take It From Here, which were, were sort of shows which we all sat and listened to together. It was sort of the, that was what bound the family together. So I'd be listening to those, whilst at the same time, on wherever it was, Tuesday night or something, having my own fix of this new show, The Goons.